In June 1972, the first F-15 Eagle rolled out the hangar door. That was almost 24 years ago. And in November 1981, the AV-8B Harrier lifted off for the very first time. That was nearly 15 years ago. From their very beginnings, both fighter programs have enjoyed success. But what does the future hold for the Eagle and the Harrier? You'll find out in this first edition of Flight Times TV. Hello, I'm Donna Race, your host for Flight Times TV, our new employee video magazine. We'll be coming your way with these 15-minute reports every other month with news and features about the people and products of McDonnell Douglas. Along with Flight Times, the new corporate-wide newspaper, we'll help keep you informed about the events, programs, policies, and technical innovations that impact all of us, that tie us together as one company. We want to hear from you, too. So take time to complete and mail the enclosed postpaid reply card. We want your comments about the program. And in some cases, we need information that will help us make distribution of Flight Times TV as cost-effective and environmentally sound as possible. Of course, you can write us anytime with your comments and suggestions. Our address is on the box. Among the regular features on FTTV will be a quick look at major news events around McDonnell Douglas. In late April, the Olympic flame arrived in Los Angeles from Athens, Greece, aboard the Centennial Spirit, a specially painted Delta Airlines MD-11. Delta, official airline of the 1996 Centennial Olympic Games, transported the flame in a special safety lantern mounted in the MD-11's cabin. The flame is being relayed across the country by thousands of torch bearers to arrive in Atlanta in mid-July. The MD-11 spectacular Olympic paint scheme was unveiled in Long Beach in early April. It's comprised of 14 colors and took two shifts working 10 days to coat the airplane with 194 gallons of paint. Back in March, another unveiling. The rollout in Huntington Beach of the advanced DCXA Delta Clipper experimental rocket. It's the follow-on to the reusable DCX rocket which successfully completed vertical takeoff and landing tests last year. The DCXA incorporates new, lighter weight fuel tanks and an auxiliary propulsion system to power its control thrusters. In cooperation with NASA, a new series of flight tests is underway at White Sands Missile Range. Also in March, McDonnell Douglas and NASA took the wraps off the X-36 Advanced Research Vehicle. The 28% scale, remotely piloted aircraft, designed and built in just 28 months at MDC's Phantom Works, could change the design of future stealthy fighters. X-36 lacks vertical and horizontal tails, using split aileron and engine thrust vectoring for flight control, technologies that promise to reduce weight, drag, and radar signature. Tests begin this summer at Edwards Air Force Base at a fraction of the cost of a full-scale piloted aircraft. In 1992, the U.S. Air Force stopped buying F-15s and the company began to shut down the production line. But then, in the wake of Desert Storm, the Royal Saudi Air Force received our government's approval to buy 72 F-15S Eagles. Today, we're producing another version for the Israeli Air Force called the F-15I. And now the U.S. Air Force has announced it wants 18 more F-15Es. The company isn't taking the new life of the F-15 for granted. Craig Johnson, vice president and general manager for the program, says his team has a strategy to assure the F-15's continued long-term success, and it's based on affordability. Now that we've got the program in production again, 
in order to ensure the long-term success of the program, we're now putting a, together what I would uh, call the F-15 strategic roadmap. That strategic roadmap is broken down into three segments. One is focused on uh, the F-15S and F-15I and the brand new F-15Es we're going to do for the United States Air Force. A lot of the focus that we're doing in that area is taking this design and upgrading it with design for manufacturing assembly so that we are actually producing it at a lower cost than we've ever done before. Another key piece of the strategy is winning a competition to provide F-15s to the United Arab Emirates. That decision is expected in June. A win would lay the groundwork for potential sales to Korea and possibly more to the U.S. Air Force. But reducing cost and production time is critical to its success. The number one objective on the F-15 program in 1996, and we started this uh, you know, mid-year last year, is to take at least 20% of our aircraft cost out by 1997. And in conjunction with that, moving our, what we call cycle time. Right now, we're somewhere between a 32 and 36 month cycle time. And we wanna take that cycle time down to 24 months. If we can have the flexibility to deliver an airplane to a customer in 24 months, and we take 20% out of the basic cost of the airplane, then I believe we have a highly competitive uh, airplane that will allow us to win international and domestic buys. About 25% of an F-15's cost is generated by the uh, production, touch labor, and support labor we do here in St. Louis on the airplane. 75% of it comes from high value uh, items that come on uh, from other suppliers. Those high value items include the sensors, black boxes, radar, and computers necessary to upgrade the F-15's performance and we're working with our suppliers to lower their costs. Uh, in order for us to allow these suppliers to reach our cost targets, uh, we're actually going out and asking them now, what do you need us to do to allow you to get to these targets? And they, it's like opening a floodgate. They say, let me maintain the configuration of my own black box or my own system coming in. Right now, either United States Air Force, for example, or McDonnell Douglas, you yourself, and your teams will, will control every single resistor, every single uh, piece of hardware that I have in my, my box. And then you tell me you want me to take 25% out of the cost. I can't do it. So let me maintain the con configuration control inside. Let me leverage off what our other units are doing in the commercial sense. And we will go ahead and more than achieve your cost targets. Defense Department initiatives to lower costs by streamlining the acquisition process allow us to tap into our suppliers' experience in the commercial world. Commercially based products often embrace newer technology, cost less, and work better than military spec items without sacrificing quality. They also make modifications less expensive. Still, 25% of the F-15's price is driven by our own costs. So, among other cost-cutting measures, we're using new lean manufacturing techniques to reduce the number of parts, simplify assembly, and make the airplane more price competitive. We have $5 billion of executable work right now on the F-15 program that we will be executing between now and the middle of 1999. We will be the second largest program behind the C-17, so it is a big, big program. That's why it's so important for us to continue bringing the cost out. Everybody knows our performance is terrific. Everybody knows we're expensive. If I can get terrific performance and affordable cost, it ensures our future. Even after the Air Force's new F-22 comes online, the F-15 will still be the world's best interdiction fighter into the year 2020. Conservatively, Craig Johnson estimates we could build up to 250 more F-15 Eagles. When we come back, the AV-8B Harrier program. You've heard it said before, not everything is in black and white. But just one little step into a gray area leads to another and then another. Pretty soon, you cross the line where the difference between black and white can be painfully clear. If it seems like a gray area, 
It's your responsibility to live by our code of ethics and standards of business conduct. She doesn't care that we make the quietest commercial airplanes on Earth. She doesn't care that our planes have carried billions of people all over the world. She doesn't care that we're already building the planes that will fly her children and their children. Grandma's coming today. Who will bring her? McDonnell Douglas will. The origins of the unique Harrier V-Stoll fighter date back to the 1960s. While its fundamental design is over 30 years old, it continues to evolve into an increasingly effective fighter plane. Today's AV-8B versions of the Harrier serve with the U.S. Marines and the Italian and Spanish navies. The addition of radar in the newest version, called the AV-8B Harrier II Plus, is a major step in its evolution. And according to program manager Chuck Allen, the airplane's prospects are looking very good. I only really became closely associated with the Harrier program about a year ago. And to be totally honest with you, I was surprised at how much of a future I think this program really has. Uh, I think the general consensus is that, you know, we've, we've about run our course. We tell you, there are some things we can do to, uh, to continue delivering this airplane. Because the Harrier 2 Plus is a different airplane. I mean, it looks a lot like the Harrier and, uh, that we've been building all along, but uh, w when you take an integrated radar into an airplane that has never had one before, it gives you capabilities that you never had before and allows you to do some of the things that you've always done but do them better. Uh, five years ago, the AV-8 could not be the only airplane in anyone's Air Force because it didn't have any air-to-air -air capability, really. That's not true today. Today, with the uh, APG-65 radar, I mean, this could be the only airplane in the Air Force today. And, and what it really means for the Marine Corps is that the Harriers now truly can operate autonomously when they need to. They can provide their own escort capability. They can provide uh, uh, better strike capability. And it's really a much more capable uh, weapon system than, it, than it's ever been before in its history. In addition to building new Harrier 2 Plus aircraft for the Marines, We've begun to remanufacture 73 older AV-8Bs into night attack fighters. Items from existing airplanes such as wings, landing gear, hydraulic systems and other components are refurbished and reused. The remanufactured airplane is given a new fuselage, a more powerful engine, and the avionics that make it a night fighter. Uh, so what the Marine Corps customer gets when we're all done is, although it's not a brand new airplane, it does have zero service life on it, so it has 6,000 fatigue hours to go. It has all new night attack systems in it. It has a radar in it. It is just like a brand new build Harrier 2 Plus, and they get all those advantages in terms of operational capability, and they get them at approximately two-thirds the cost of what it would take to build a brand new airplane. Affordability to ensure the longevity of the program is a big driver on the AV-8B program, too. To cut costs, the AV-8B and T-45 lines have been combined. Teams have been tasked to meet lower cost targets every year through 1997. They're working with production people and suppliers to find less expensive ways to build the airplane. And it's working. Let's see, if I guess if I could point to the one thing I'm proudest of in the Harrier program today is the gains we've made in the affordability of our product for our customer. So at a rate of four a year, which is constant from 94 to 95, we reduce the price of our product to the customer by somewhere between 15 and 20 percent, depending on exactly how you measure it. Uh, you know, we're going to see something probably in excess of another 10 percent price reduction on top of that between 95 and 96. The fiscal year 95-96 price reduction is based in part on a production rate increase from four to eight aircraft a year. And given the strong support for the Harrier 2 Plus from Congress and the Marine Corps, Chuck Allen expects production to jump to 10 airplanes in 97, 12 in 98, and 16 airplanes in both 99 and the year 2000. There's also potential to remanufacture an additional 26 airplanes for the Marines. And being the only fixed-wing aircraft in the Italian and Spanish navies, there is certainly a market there for follow-on buys. 
So there's quite a bit of business out there. There are other parts of the world that we think very much would be interested in having a Harrier. The capability, the unique capability this airplane provides you. And even if we don't sell another new airplane beyond what's currently planned for the Marine Corps, Spain and Italy, uh, there will be AV-8Bs flying with the U.S. Marine Corps, the Spanish Navy, the Italian Navy, well past the year 2015. While the F-15 and AV-8B programs are mature, their production and support programs can extend well into the next century. According to Craig Johnson, the key is to squeeze out more cost, technically deliver what we promise, and do it on time. I'm Donna Race. From all of us at Flight Times TV, thanks for watching.